Welcome to the much anticipated first Grand Meadows Alternative Dimension Horse Quiz. And I've got my wine chilled, my cheese is beautiful, took it out of the uh, fridge a couple of hours ago. Hope you did the same if you're trying to do the same thing with me, drinking the same wine, eating the same cheese. For those of you who have no clue what I'm talking about, uh, go to our Grand Matters Alternative Dimension Horse Quiz Preview, which is on our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to have 20 questions today, we're going to have 10 questions and we're going to have the intermission uh, and then we're going to talk about the wine and the cheese, uh, then we'll have the second, uh, second 10 questions. Uh, and the winner each week is going to win a £25 box of Grand Premium Plus. If you don't know what Grand Premium Plus is, I would again refer you to our YouTube channel and look for episode 17, The Really, Really Big Fireplace. So you can find out what uh, Grand Premium Plus is. And beyond that, uh, I just want to let you know I'm going to run through the questions relatively quickly. Uh, I figure you guys can go back and stop the, uh, stop the uh, film whenever you want and you know spend more time on the answers. I think it's going to be a bit boring if I sort of wait for two minutes between every question. So, let us start. On your screen now, question one. According to the FEI, on February the 5th, 1949, at the Arena del Mar in Santiago, Chile, Capitano Alberto Morales achieved the record for the highest jump by a horse. How high did his horse, Huasso, jump? That's 70 years. That's pretty amazing. You would think somebody would have jumped higher than that by now. All right, question two. What was the name of Zorro's horse? And there's two answers, both very similar for this. Either one will work. The name of Zorro's horse. Question three. From what breed was the first horse cloned? Was it A an Appaloosa, B, a Halflinger, C, a Morgan, or D, a Morab. What breed was the first horse cloned? Question four, an opportunity for my German accent. Germany is the all-time leader for Olympic equestrian gold medals. Which country is in second place? So the Germans are in the lead. Who is coming in second? This is a big mystery to me. Question five. What is the size of the standard dressage arena? And you can give me the answer in metric or feet. You don't get any more points for both, just one or the other. Okay, question six. Ah, another opportunity for me to uh, take my accent up a couple of notches here as we're talking about Squire Gordon at Birtwick Park. So, in the book Black Beauty, uh, a beauty is sent to Squire Gordon at Birtwick Park. Uh, what are the names of the two horses that became his best friends uh, during that period of his life? And I'm assuming, of course, that many of you have read the book or seen the movie, or perhaps both. Question seven. Should be an easy one. What are the five normal gates of the horse? The five normal gates of the horse. Question eight. Rather sombre. How many horses died in World War I? Was it A, 5 million, B, 7 million, C, 8 million, or D, 10 million? Very, very sad. Question nine. What is the name of the individual horse that has won the most Olympic gold medals in show jumping. The name of the individual horse that's won the most Olympic gold medals in show jumping by quite a wide margin. And our last question, 
before the intermission. How long was the Pony Express in existence? Was it A, six months, B, one and a half years, C, three years, or D, two and a half years? So I guess either way, too many of them were getting killed by Indians or something. Uh, didn't last that long. But that was the 10th question. Okay. So again, we're going to have a little break. Hopefully you're going to get a chilled bottle of wine out of the fridge. Um, glass. Again, hopefully your cheese. And then we'll come back and talk about the wine and the cheese. And then we'll have the second uh, 10 questions. See you in a bit. Right, welcome back. Hopefully you've got your bottles of wine charged. Now on the screen, you're going to see a sort of a wine region map of France. So currently today, if you see Burgundy, uh, and then you sort of go up to the sort of mauve colored uh, and the town Auxerre, and sort of immediately just to the right of there is the town Chablis uh, and this wine, the Saint Celine, comes from that area. Um, I drove through this town actually uh, last year, it's beautiful, you can see the Saint Auxerre there, uh, lovely shot of the uh, surrounding countryside, you know, with just grapes everywhere. Um, What's interesting uh, about these wines, as I proceed to open it, uh, <clears throat> is that beyond the fact that they're just really fruity and yet still dry, um, they have this sort of minerally, almost chalky finish in, in the sort of back of your tongue. And why that is, is kind of an interesting story, is millions of, whoops, millions of years ago, um, this was, uh, all, oh, I'm doing a very good job of opening the bottle, aren't I? Uh, millions of years ago, this was all covered by the ocean. And so if you walk around a, a Burgundian vineyard and kick the terroir around a little bit, uh, you will uh, see fossils of various weird sea creatures. Um, and uh, because all of those are in the soil, that's where you sort of get this minerally uh, finish. Now, this particular wine... Uh, I, you know, I'm doing a little bit of research before I pick a wine, and, and, and in Burgundy you have the best Premier Cru, second best Grand Cru, uh, third best Village, fourth best, you know, Chateau, and uh, I'm not even sure if this is any of those, but in the reviews I read about it, uh, they actually said, you know, this, I mean, you could be drinking this and think you're drinking a Premier Cru or a Grand Cru. And considering it was like 13, 14 bucks from Trader Joe's and a Premier Cru uh, White Burgundy is, you know, 60, 70 bucks, I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, you know, have a good smell. Yeah, apple, um, apple, pear, it's, yeah, it's so delicious. Mmm, 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 really, really fruity, um, a little bit of acid, it, 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 oh god, it's just, it's really delicious wine, mmm, okay, so to go along with that, get me crackers out, we're going to have some of this delicious cheese. Now what you can see, see how soft this is now? That's what you want to do, particularly with this, uh, you know, a double creme, which would be like brie, camembert, or in this case, a triple creme. You want to take it out of the uh, fridge a long time. You know, people who like take, if you take brie out of the fridge and then you just bung it in the oven to melt it. No, no, no. You want the, uh, the uh, cheese to ripen. I mean, you want all the cheese to be out of the fridge for a while. Um, but particularly in this case, so, so you get this really lovely uh, softness to the cheese. I actually like brie to be almost runny. The other thing you'll see on this cheese, 
probably won't actually, but maybe it'll show up in the camera. This is called a, a, a Rumi uh, cheese, this Delice de Bourgogne, and it's sort of this white mold uh, that's kind of on the sides here. So you can eat all of this. And the interesting thing is that you actually get slightly different tastes. So you have, you know, the, the rind, uh, and then you have what's called the paste in the middle. So I'm going to reposition, because I don't need to get that much cheese, and I'm going to use my super Gucci um, cheese slice. It's so soft, it's, whoops, it's uh, taking off rather a lot. All right, that's okay, I can live with that. And I'm going to take one of my other Super Gucci cheese items. So you see I've got the white stuff on the top that I'm not going to die. Mmm. Mmm. It's really, really buttery. Kind of got a little bit of a sort of mushroomy. Oh God, it's so good. And again, the key is, if I'd just eaten this, just taking it out of the fridge and eating it, completely different flavor. Um, you know, the richness uh, 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 of the cheese. And, and again, here, look, see, I'm eating the top. Again, I will not die. That is so good. Um, everybody's very excited at the office because obviously I'm not going to eat all this cheese. And I'm not planning on drinking all the wine. So um, I really hope, you know, maybe you guys didn't do it this time. But for the next quiz, if you keep watching, you know, I'm trying to get wines that are sort of re readily accessible and cheese that is readily accessible. So again, versus the normal sort of cooking show, and you watch them eat the you know, eat the food after they've made the recipe and you're going, and they're going, oh, oh yeah, this is so good, you must try it at home. Well, this way, you're actually going to be able to taste the wine and the cheese, hopefully, that I'm, uh, I'm drinking. Okay, on that note, we will move on to what will be question 11. What is the Latin name for the horse, the Latin name for the horse. 12. How big is the world's largest horseshoe? Is it A, 2.24 meters by 2.54 meters, B, 2.36 meters by 2.47 meters, C, 2.64 meters by 2.78 meters, or D, 2.15 meters by 2.26 meters. That's a very large horseshoe. Okay, question 13. Old Billy was the oldest horse ever recorded. How old was he? Was he A, 54, B, 62, C, 49, or D, 64? Whatever age he was, whoever had old Billy obviously looked after him. All right, question 14. And... An opportunity for a French accent, given that it's a Federation Equestrian International uh, question. So the FAI uh, has reduced the number of refusers, uh, resulting in uh, elimination uh, from show jumping uh, competition from uh, four to three. Uh, true or uh, false? Alors, question 15. A Hollywood horse named Pie rode in 17 westerns with this actor. Was it A, Gary Cooper, B, Henry Fonda, C, Jimmy Stewart, or D, John Wayne? 
Question 16. How long can a horse generally survive without water? Is it A, two days, B, three days, C, four days, or D, five days? Seems to be a bit of a correlation there with the numbers and the letters. Question 17. How many horses have won the Triple Crown? How many horses have won the Triple Crown? Question 18. I don't, I can't do a Mr. Ed voice, sorry. Mr. Ed ran from 1961 until 1966, also the year England last won the World Cup. How many episodes were produced? Was it A, 128, B, 135, C, 143, or D, 151? How many episodes of Mr. Ed? All right, question 19. Another opportunity for the Germans. So competitive dressage training is based on the progression of six steps originally developed by the German National Equestrian Foundation. What are the names of three of these steps in German? It's an easy question. Just three out of the six. This is all I'm asking for. And the final question. Horses have the largest eyes of any land mammal. True or false? Okay, so uh, on your screen I'm going to put a like just a sheet of white paper with the way I, I want you guys to submit your answers and also on the screen is going to be the email you're going to send them to. We've done a, a special designated email quiz at grandmeadows.com. Um, I'm also going to just show you briefly uh, on the screen as well, kind of in the credits, the wine we're getting next week, which is a Beaujolais from Bone. We're going south uh, down onto the Rhone River, uh, just north of uh, Lyon. And we're also going to be eating a cheese called Compte, C-O-M-T-E. Again, I'm going to put that on the screen. Uh, we will be having the quiz again next Wednesday, which I believe is the 20th. Uh, it'll be the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I hope you guys will join us. And hopefully, if you didn't do it this time, next time you'll have the same cheese and wine. Uh, so you can actually go, oh, yes, actually, this is rather good. Thanks for watching. Bye.